Hey everybody, Grins here. Well, we're gonna make Ms. Go 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 again. So uh, we got some parts. We're gonna give her a tune up and see if we can uh, get her going. It, uh, it's been sitting a while. It's been 28 degrees in the morning. So we figure we better get her running so we can charge the battery up. See what happens. Took the spark plugs out, the cap off rotor taking off the uh, points right now I just put a condenser in there a while ago so I'm gonna leave that I think I'm gonna leave the coil and see if I can make it run without a new coil I have a new one just in case I bought a kit with everything in it but I don't want to put it in if it's not bad and I've tested it as far as I could and it seems like it works so I'm sure there's better ways to test it some people say it either works or it don't. Some people say it won't put out high voltage enough to make it run right, but we're gonna see what happens. So I'm gonna keep all the old parts just to have, clean them up, use them in an emergency. A little helper, Gracie. <laughs> Nineteen twenty nine Model A Mizugogo. Oh, yeah, points do look a little burnt. Maybe that was part of the problem. So when I got it, the guy said he didn't lube up this little cam shaft here for the rotor. Uh, I know a lot of points. I know a lot of people say you need to polish them and get them really smooth and cuts the drag down and wear on your points block rubbing thing. But I'm just going to wipe it off and lube it up with some more... Uh, dielectric tune-up grease. Clean up the uh, connections a little bit. Make everything as good as connection as I can. Oh yeah, that little rubbing block does look like it got worn down a little bit. Here's the old one. Maybe that was part of the problem too, is the rubbing block got worn down too much and closed the points too far. We'll see. Thank you. 
box of goodies here. They packed it away really good, so I was really hoping that I could just keep this in the trunk for a spare emergency box, but looks like I'm gonna need some parts. Little buggers are expensive. They packed it really nice. Got a new cap, new coil wire. I think I'm gonna try saving that. Save that with the coil. I got a new coil holder. But that's what I was looking for. My new points. I got the rotor. Guess I gotta gap that too with the distributor. All kinds of excitement. New distributor cap. So I guess the rotor can only be, I think it's like 0.25 thousandths or whatever from the contacts when it's turning. So I gotta make sure that's gapped right and I guess file it down if it's not. Let's see, is that all? Got my coil down there. We'll keep that coil in there for emergency. So we got the backup. Got back in there. Save the coil wire in there too. Put the coil holder in there. And we will save that for another day. Hopefully, hopefully I can just put the points on, put everything in, gap it all up. Starter up, it ran great when I got it, so I'm not gonna mess with the timing. Got a nice big trunk for old tools. Had to tow it home last time I drove it. And uh, ripped the bumper off, so I gotta get a new, new little holder there. Broke the lens, but I got a new one. Plus it had these cheap aftermarket ones on one side where you, it just ripped the thing right off. Garbage. Try to find some original ones. Lube up that uh, rotating cam dealy bobber. I'm a firm believer in more is more. So we will put a bunch on there and let the rotor sort it out. Put a little more of that dialectic tune-up grease over here on these uh, connections.
Uh oh, don't drop that, please. Don't drop that. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Oh, did I drop it? Uh, I don't know. I think I dropped it. Nope, there it is. I better go get a magnet. I'll be back. Tried to drop that nut down into the distributor. That would have been a bummer. So uh, let me see if I can get it out. Probably put my camera down so I can use both hands. Aha! Got it. Good deal. Trying to uh, get these wires lined up here on the points thing and. Oh, that's a good idea. Use the magnet to keep it, get it going, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Oh, don't cross thread it. Don't cross thread it. Okay, I'm gonna straighten those out and tighten it now by using both hands. Okay, so I got those tightened, those connections for the electrical. I got the, um, the rotor, uh, not the rotor, but the points, rubber piece, the block, the rubbing block on the, I believe what's the, one of the tallest points of the cam distributor cam here. I believe there's four of them for four spark plugs. So I think I got it where I need it. Now I just need to stick a feeler gauge in, gap it. I'm gonna, I got a high compression head. So I'm gonna gap it. Some people say point between point 18 and point 0.22 or so. So I'm gonna point 0.20 thousandths. And then Spark plugs are supposed to be at 0.35, but with a high compression head, a lot of people say go down to like 30, 32. So I'm gonna probably try 32. Okay, so 0.22 is what I'm gonna use. Pretty sure I've read that these points are out of like a 1970s V8 you can use as well. So I'm not sure what they gap it at, but we're gonna go with 0.22. Okay, I think I said 0.22 is what I was going to go for, but they say 18 to 22, so I'm going to go 20, I believe. Pretty close. Should probably put it a little bigger so it could, uh, when it rubs down, it gets to be right, but I'll have to adjust them later. But we're going to try it at 20. Wow, so all the plugs came to be gapped about 0.25 or a little lower. Um, stock is 0.35, but with high compression heads, people say to run it about 0 0.30, 0 0.32. So looks like I'm going to have to open them up a little bit. I think 0.25 would be a little too much. Some people would say 0.28 but I think I want to stick with like somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to go 0.30. So you open them with this little bugger right here. Opened it a little too much. So I had to tap on it to shut it up a little. Should be about Point three zero slides in pretty good. Might be a little more, but it's definitely lower than point three four. That's how you open them. Then you tap them back down when you open them too far. So we'll try one, another one. 
So we got another one, brand new one here. It's, it's about 0.25, a little lower. So we're gonna open it just a little bit. Not too much, last time I opened it too far. Just a little bit, a little bit more. Perfect. Not sure why they all came so low. Maybe 0.25 is a better running thing, or maybe that's just how they came. I know. Some people say you just need to gap them out of the box, but uh, whoop, opened it up a little too far, I think. So we'll go over here and we'll tap it back down. Just tap it down on a piece of metal. Don't want to go back and forth too many times, I imagine. So that's pretty tight, 0 0.30, pretty tight. So yeah, definitely not 0.34, definitely bigger than 0.25. So we're gonna roll with that. Okay, you gotta have your feeler gauges when you got your points and plugs. Make sure everything's good to go. And then what we're gonna do is take off these uh because these are aftermarket plugs they make some cool ones the original style where you don't have to take this little piece off but you gotta take this little piece off so you can put your uh wire copper conductor in your spark plug your copper spark plug i'll show you that in a bit I'm just gonna do them snug, nice and snug. I don't wanna over tighten them. Wear out my compression washer thing. And they really don't need to be too tight. They just need to be in and tight enough not to fall out or keep the dirt and water out. I bought the cheaper auto light ones, but they're still not cheap. I still think they're like 30 some dollars a piece or somewhere. Probably not that much. I think I got the whole, yeah, I don't know. They weren't cheap. It wasn't your couple dollar spark plug. They got, I think you can buy the adapter kit so you can put cheaper regular spark plugs in, but I kind of wanted to keep it somewhat original looking. But the original, original looking ones are cool. They have the little brass cap here for, um, Putting your spark plug things on there. Your ground spark plug straps. So I'm going to put some more dielectric tune-up grease on my connections. Keep those uh, connections water tight somewhat because it gets pretty moist up here in Washington. And uh, the more I can do to keep it from corroding faster, the more I don't have to work on it. And I really don't like working on it. I don't mind tinkering on it when I don't have to, but when it doesn't run and it sticks me on the side of the road, that's no fun. Okay, so we got the Spark plugs gapped and in. I should probably write this stuff down before I forget. I'm trying to do a log book on it so I know when and when I changed what and what. So let me do that first. I think I did 0 0.3, 0.30-ish on the plugs and 0.20 on the points. All right, so it looks like I've got my new spark plug wires here plug copper straps looks like they gave me eight in this kit so I have four extra so that's cool um, it should be pretty clean on the end so I'm probably not gonna polish them up sandpaper them off like I usually would since they're brand new uh, when I was broken down on the side of the road last time I 
seeing that this little contact was a little corroded and dirty, so I took my fingernail and tried to wipe some of it off, and it's like graphite, so it basically broke in half, so careful with that. Then they say that the gap between the tip of this and the tip of that should be 0.35 as it goes around, so I'll try to put it at that. Slides in here. Oh, where, no, no. Oh. Just gotta stop paying attention to the camera. There we go. There's where that slot fits. It fits right in there. Well, that's a nice tight fit. My other ones fit that good. Okay, cool. So I am going to. Put a little dielectric tune-up grease on these points before I put the rotor in. Well, yeah, sure. I use a lot of this stuff. I'm sure it's good everywhere, but up here in Washington, I uh, try to keep everything lubed up. Because of the moisture. Okay, then I'll put my rotor on. Put a little bit of stuff on there too. And then, uh, Probably gonna have to turn it around. Put a little bit on there. Oop, a little bit on there. I need a GoPro camera. Hat. <laughs> Kind of a nuisance. But I want to make some YouTube videos so everybody watches them and makes um put some on here since I have some on my finger. Makes it so I can uh, quit my job and make videos. Get paid from the YouTube. That's why I started this channel. So I don't want to work no more. I just want to make YouTube videos. But I should probably just buy a lottery ticket. It'd probably be better. Okay, so we got it. Now what we're gonna do is get another rag, get that gunk off my finger. And we already have the crank still in here. Crank so I can turn it to where it needs to be. I'm gonna watch that go to the points. Oh, shoot, I'm gonna have to go all the way around the other way. Should have done it with the spark plugs out. It makes it a lot easier. You can see the rotor moving, maybe. Oh, right, right there. Okay, we should be able to take a gap measurement on that. Probably should have uh, checked that before I lubed it up because I might have to file it. It looks pretty close. 0.35, we'll see. Get my handy dandy feeler gauges back out. I don't even know, just go to 0.35 on the feeler gauge. 0.26, uh-oh. No, or is that what the gold ones are? I don't think I've ever used these gold ones. Grass. Oh no, that's like really small, 0.14. So yeah, I need some bigger feeler gauges.
I might have some in my grandpa's old toolbox that I got when he passed away. 0.26, wow. That's weird. It's like 0.26 is the biggest feeler gauge. But that's, those are just for points. So I guess I'm gonna have to use the spark plug one. 0 0.30, 0 0.34, we'll go with that. 0.35, we're gonna go 0.34. See what happens. Oh, looks like this must have been recording for a while. I'm not sure how long we've been doing this section. We're up to five minutes. Let me uh, let me just do it without the camera so I can see what I'm doing. Oh shoot, the gap looks like it's about 0.25, a little shorter. I don't think it'll hurt as long as it's not uh, rubbing. So let me take it around once and make sure it doesn't rub. See down in there? Did I pass it? it? Looks like I just passed it. But it's not dragging. It's supposed to file it down a little bit, but I really don't want to. I'm sure it'll be fine if I don't. Oops. So yeah, most people say you do want to keep it about 0.25 said most of these aftermarket come about 0.16 and that's probably about what it is um but as long as it's in the center it's gonna wear down eventually i don't really want to start bending and filing on it so i'm just gonna see how it runs i'm sure some people file it down to the 0.35 but uh for now i'm just gonna see how it runs And here we are again with more tune-up grease. I'm gonna put it right here on this electrode. Contact. And uh, strap this down. Okay, I'm gonna stick the uh, rest of this stuff in my old coil wire. If it doesn't run good after this, I'll change the coil wire and coil. I just don't wanna put new parts if I don't have to, these things aren't cheap. So let me get my fancy little coil straps. There. 
I guess, uh, spark plug straps. Dang it. For some reason, I don't have my pocket knife on me today. So, let me see what I can do here. Try these open with a screwdriver. That's right, you always gotta carry your pocket knife on you. Because you're always gonna need it. So, got these cool little straps and I have never put a brand new flat one on. They've always came, I'm sure there's a certain way you're supposed to put it, but uh, basically, I don't know if you can see this, but it goes, uh, Here, let me turn it on. So it goes back on there. And then your little cap goes on there. So the old school ones have a nice little brass cap with them. Little gnarly traction things that you can uh, put your finger on and do it with your hand. But I'll just get some pliers and tighten that one and then I'll do that one. So and the other two, there goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's pretty easy, pretty basic. Okay, got my needle nose. I need to get a good toolbox set up for this car so I don't have to go back and forth. My foot's killing me. I uh, still working half days, come out and tinker out here after work after a while. Figure if I gotta go to work, I should be able to work around tinker with my toys but my foot needs the rest it really hurts so most of you know I was in a motorcycle accident almost a year and a half ago about and it's just not quite healing right and uh, makes my life miserable and if you want to go check out some good footage on all that good stuff go back to the beginning YouTube videos from about a year and a half ago that's when I all started this so I could uh, I was in my wheelchair and I was bored and I wanted, I was seeing that people were making money by making YouTube videos. So I figured I want to do that, especially since I can't work for a while. Now that I can work, I still don't want to work. I still can't work fully, I guess. It hurts too bad. So I don't know what I'm going to do. But I'm pinching these with the needle nose and it makes it, uh, Gives it a better contact on here. Keeps it more solid. It could, as long as it's touching it, it'd probably work good, but I want to just put a little uh, pinch on them and see if that'll help. I don't really like this setup. I never, my other ones, the original ones, it seemed like they were pretty uh, more solid. But Oh, I just gotta deal with what we can, I guess. Maybe that's why they give you so many, because they're garbage. So, this one's not working out. I don't like the bend on these either, but it's gonna work. It's just gotta work for now. We'll make it look pretty once it runs. Squeeze that together a little so it hits on here and stays. sure some people have a better technique I don't know what I'm doing so this is my second model a but I'm still learning I had a 29 two-door sedan and I just thought I didn't want it so I sold it for really cheap and then I started missing it so I bought this one and uh, here we are again try not to sell this one because I'll probably end up having to buy another one and I got a pretty good deal on this it's all pretty much uh, original all beat up and then the motor's been rebuilt so uh, I think this is a good one to keep it's not fancy but I don't like fancy stuff kind of like it beat up a little okay well this one's not really playing nice Let's see, how did I do the other ones? I just kind of bent them up. Ugh, if I keep bending this tab right here, I'm probably going to break it eventually. Ugh. 
Oh, I think we got a nice tight fit. That's pretty tight. And then I kind of think bend them up a little so it puts pressure on them. That might be a key too. Should have left the ones that were tight. Okay, so it's, it's tight enough. Oh, that one fell right off. Oh, that one pulled off. Maybe if I'd leave it alone, they'd be okay. <laughs> so that one's a little loose. That one, oh, they're all a little loose. I don't know. It's just the way they did it back then. So, are you gonna try to tighten them all up a little bit more? I'm not sure why they can't make them fit better but maybe that's part of the fun of having it old. <laughs> Everything was a little bit different back then. Okay, so if I'd stop pulling on it, it'd probably stay on there enough to start it at least. And I think as long as it's touching, it'll make contact. I guess maybe you could put them on there and then pinch it. Maybe that's a good trick. But for now, I think, see, I keep pulling on them. But they're touching. Oh, oh, oh danger, danger. See, I messed that one up. Should have just left it alone. Okay, so I think if I put some funky bends in here to make it kind of press on it, it's better. The first one I did is really good. These ones are a little ugly, but I just want to see if I can get it running first and then I can play with those later. So yeah, that one's kind of ugly. That's the last one I did. That one's kind of funky. That one's funky. <laughs> And then, uh, first one's kind of the better one. So, but we're gonna get it, see if we can just get it running. All right, well, it should be all good now. I am going to go inside, take a quick break, come out, unplug the battery charger, take the little piece of towel I shoved in the muffler to keep the moisture out, and we'll see if it starts. Pick up my tools so I don't drop them in the motor. First, we're going to check the oil. Yep, it was up to the little F mark. Probably can't see it, but it was good. Probably change it in a month or so. I've only had it since October. Used to drive it a lot when I got it, but I think now it's been sitting since like January. All right. Found my knife. 
I don't know if you really guys tried these things, but it was sitting on the counter when they came in. Pretty darn tasty. Some sort of a cheese corn dog with potatoes strapped to it. <laughs> gonna have a quick little lunch. Then we're gonna go see if we can start that beast. Careful. Careful, buddy. He's a good boy. That's my buddy. Well, sitting here thinking about it, I probably should adjust my carburetor and timing so everything fires right so I don't foul my plugs again but I don't want to so I think we're going to run it how it is and uh, see if it'll run and then maybe once we get it started probably just keep running it and then maybe next time we'll do the timing and the fuel everything ran great when I bought it it ran great started right up so I think it's just from um, probably let, maybe letting it sit idle and maybe not using my spark advanced lever as good as I should. And I did, I, I used my uh, throttle advanced lever a lot too instead of using my foot pedal. So maybe I should use my foot pedal more. Um, I don't know. With my bad foot, I kind of liked using my spark advance and throttle advance so I didn't have to use my foot. So, uh, I know I don't have my settings down perfect for when I am driving. Some people say use your spark advance like halfway down or some people say all the way down when running at high speed. I'll have to read the book again. I think. But it's all different. Each car is different I believe with the with a, however you got it set up with the different gaps and I don't know if high compression head makes it any different. Some people have been saying that high compression head isn't good if you have an old motor, but this one's just been rebuilt. But still, I probably, if I was to do it over, I'd probably just put a regular head on it. I'm not trying to race the car, just cruise it. So I'm just running through some thoughts. I'm sure everybody's got their own thoughts. See if anybody says anything. Maybe they could help me out. Alright, so what I started doing is putting this little rag in here to keep the moisture out of the motor since it's been sitting so long. But uh, yeah, everything looks pretty good on it. Put a new floor in the back, the guy did. Put um, these little shocks on it. A lot of people say don't do it, probably just because it keeps it from being original, but I like it cool little shocks the uh brake drums were brand new when i got it but they've been sitting out getting rusty i probably should have painted them maybe one day i will but for now i'm just gonna drive it and enjoy it it is what it is it's gonna be what it's gonna be i'm gonna use it i'm gonna enjoy it i'm not gonna park it in the garage and let it sit Sitting outside, the uh, wheels get dirty. They were brand new wheels, so 
It's getting used, used and abused. And uh, floorboard's getting dirty from sitting out here in the rain and dirt. Put a brand new seat in it, the guy did, who I bought it from, so I covered it up. Put a brand new thing in there. Did some re stuff up there. You've got all the gray kit to do all the sides and stuff, but I like the old look, so I'm probably not gonna put it in. Not for a long time anyway. So under here, it still looks pretty good. He put a new battery in it. Last June, so it's not even a year old. That's why I wanted to get it out here and get it running so it doesn't die. I bought some of this uh, liquid wrench lube spray. I thought it was penetrating oil when I bought it, but it turned out to be like this weird goopy stuff. And uh, so I sprayed that all over. I just don't know what I think about it yet. Got a nice hole in the floor there. But he patched it, so I'm not gonna fall through at least. Just gotta make sure I don't get my stuck on all this oil up here. So I keep my battery tender plugged into it. It's just a little one, but it's better than nothing. Not enough to keep it from dying all the way. It still hasn't made it to a full charge. It's been sitting out here for months. So uh, yeah, time to see if she'll start. Oh, I don't like being on the ground. Oh, I'm getting too old. Oh, goodness sakes. Oh. Woo. So, here we are again. A couple things we need to do. Make sure we got all the stuff picked up out of the way. And, uh, don't want no tools or any of these, uh, work towels. Put these on there to keep the Keep the paint nice. You know, it's got this nice paint. Don't want to scratch it. Got this cool patch right there. And uh, yeah, get this stuff out of the way so it doesn't fly into the fan. Make sure I got everything that fell. I know I got gas in there, I put it in last time. Make sure these connections are pretty tight. Yep, I just did that connection last time I worked on it. So, uh, let's see if we can get Ms. Go Go to Go Go. Oh, better take the crank out. I'm not gonna hand crank it. Not today. One day I'll, uh, one day I'll learn how to do it, but probably set the uh, timing a little better before I do it so it starts up and doesn't kick back got the shovel head where I advance the timing to probably a little too much and it kicks back tries to break your leg and I don't want this to break my arm or hand so I uh, probably should retard the timing a little bit I've been watching some YouTube videos and uh, so I gotta check what fuse that is too and get some spares so if I'm on the side of the road. So what the guy did is he put a nice little battery on off switch right there. And uh, take my shoe off because it's pretty nice and clean in here. Put the battery's on, test the horn. Oh, I'm not gonna test the horn. I don't know how dead the battery is and I don't wanna Kill the battery. I want to try and get it started first. Oh, tight squeeze. Little people. So, uh, yeah, good. I did have my spark advance all the way retarded when I did the timing or the set the points. I don't know if that mattered, but after I did it, I thought, shoot, I hope I had that retarded all the way. Then my throttle advance, we're going to turn down in a little bit here. So I get my key off my neck and you gotta gotta fix the gas gauge it worked when I got it but um, he put a new rubber cork a rubber gas gauge bobber on there and I don't know if it's when I was filling it with gas one day or uh, if it just decided to 
stop floating. I wouldn't think rubber would stop floating, so I might have when I had my five gallon jerry can. So anyway, fix that one day. So this, when it's down, is on. And then you got your uh, choke and enrichner. You gently t close it to the right until it seats, but not too hard. And then open it about one turn. I might've been driving it with that too far enriched. And uh, that's why I fouled the plugs. They're a little, a little rich. So we're in neutral. We're gonna turn down the, I lubed up the th throttle advance so now it doesn't stay down and stick like it used to when it was all rusty, but I put it down about a few clicks. Um, try to start it with the starter button down there. And then uh, once it starts, advance the th spark. So it's kind of a, bit of a to-do, I'm gonna put this, let's see here. Whoop, well there it goes, I thought I was recording but I wasn't. So I didn't like to be choked so much, it took a while to start, but uh, it started. And uh, doesn't seem to be running that good. Yeah, my uh, little thing was open way too much. I opened about two turns on accident. Whoops. So, yeah, it's running like crap. <laughs> Maybe it could open because it's cold. So, anyway, let's uh, try it again. I'm thinking maybe I should change the coil. just for the heck of it we bought the coil let's just replace the coil who knows maybe it was the coil the whole time Maybe it wasn't producing enough spark. I heard some people say that it'll still work, but it won't produce the high voltage to make it spark right. Maybe that's why it was fouling my plugs. So while my plugs are still new, that way I can say I have all new stuff except for the condenser because I put the condenser in last time I drove it, or last time I worked on it, and it because it broke down and so I. Just, I've just put the condenser in and it started right up and drove around the block fine but then it died in the driveway so I decided well let me just change all the parts and it wouldn't start everything was kind of fouled out and so it's been sitting since and uh, so let's see if this will help
Well, I guess last time I took it all the way apart. Put it on pretty good too, I guess. There we go. We'll just take it all the way apart. I got a new uh, coil holder, so I might as well use it. I don't know if this is the original one or not. Gotta get a bigger screwdriver. Getting this all the way off of here. I doubt that's the original strap anyway. But I'll take a look at it once it's off and if it looks like it is, then I'll put it back on. Just use something, keep some of the old parts. All right, so we got this off. Yeah, that's not the original one. That's a shiny, shiny and been spray painted. So, let me just take this off just out of curiosity to see what it looks like under here make sure some of the other wiring is good the guy has it kind of jammed on there because he put a thermostat wire so it doesn't quite fit right so maybe there's something else going on under there i still haven't taken it apart since i've got it i should make sure everything looks somewhat okay Everything looks tight. Everything looks pretty good in there. So I'm gonna leave it. I should probably put a little file in there. It looks like he filed it a little bit, but probably not enough. So this will sit flat, but I'll do that another day. I just want to try to get it running today. And so tomorrow, take it for a drive, charge the battery up. And if the coil doesn't fix it, the only other thing it could be is the condenser went bad already again, which I wouldn't think it would, but I mean, you never know. I hear these condensers are pretty crappy but I might have all my gaps too far off too. Maybe while I have this apart open, I'll take a look at this and see if anything's rubbing. Probably should have. Uh... Oh man, that's tight. That's tight. There we go. It's touching there, it's touching there. It doesn't look like it's gouging. Um... My points can't be, I mean, it should run. I, the only thing, I guess it could be the timing, but the timing was fine before I started it or the other day. And that's the timing slowly turned itself. But I don't think it could because the distributor would have to turn, I believe, to change the timing. I didn't do that. So one of these days I'll do the timing, but today if the coil doesn't work, then I guess it's just gonna sit again. Right, got my new coil holder. This coil is pretty cool. It's got these little uh, tabs. 
So you could do push on stake wires, but I don't want to redo my connections, so I'm going to take them off. And I guess if it starts, maybe I just throw that coil away so I don't try using it again someday. Because usually I like to keep the old parts and then before I know it, I'm trying to put them back on. Okay. So I've got my six volt. Got my positive and negative. Maybe I have them backwards. First time I took the coil off. The other time I worked on it, I didn't notice which way it was. And then uh, after I put it all together, I couldn't remember which way I had it, but I did a lot of research and it looks like that red wire goes to the ignition, which goes to the positive. Some people say it'll run either way. Anybody got any comments on that? But, uh, oh shoot. It looks like I'm gonna have to uh, put the bolt in first, because this thing's so long, it's gonna be in the way of the bolt. That makes it kind of a nuisance. So, back this all the way back out. I don't know if I can put it in like this. You don't put a little WD-40 in the holes. Maybe. This WD 40 has been sitting outside here in the cold. It's probably not too happy with me. Oh. No, it's not working. Sunshine for a while. Let's see if I got some more right here. All right, I do got some more out there, and it's I'm gonna squirt it in there. take this off for a while. Oh, is it in the way of that thing? Yes, it is in the way of that thing. That thing's gonna come all the way out. All the way out. Maybe I should just use the old one.
make sure I can get it in like this. The other one I couldn't. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is kind of sucks. Because I probably would need to pinch it in before I tighten it all the way. That way I can pinch it on the coil. So I will loosen this one up. Tighten the other one. Could cut that bolt, but I just want to get it running, man. You know what I mean? I just want to make it run. So, put that in. We'll put the coil in from the other side. feeling I have these wires hooked up backwards but from all the research I've done it seems like this should be the way to do it see what's going on up there it's gonna be a long video all right so let's tighten it up well a little screwdriver works better I guess anyway Screwdriver stripping, stripping it out already. Okay, good enough. Uh. So now I should be able to tighten this one up. Tight. Oh, it's not. <laughs> huh. I think I. Uh, I think I should have used the other coil strap. This one's kind of a nuisance. It is a nuisance. 
I think I need to loosen this back up, push it all the way over and then tighten it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I need to do. So, loosen this back up. Loosen this back up. Take it back out, maybe. Little screwdriver. There we go. I'm gonna push this all the way up. Probably just take that out before I drop it. Gotta loosen this up. Push it all the way over. Okay, that should make it so I can tighten it all the way. Try this again, little screwdriver. Ah, goodness sakes. That's probably, it's probably a good spot. Okay, now it's a lot tighter. Now I can tighten this one up. Okay, solid. All right, so I already put the dielectric tune up grease away. So I'll go get that. We'll make these connections. Still there, just enjoying the view. All right, so we got our water lubricated dielectric tune up grease, keep all the moisture out. Some on there, some on there. Goop these all up. Yeah, I don't know if I have this right. The red goes to the ignition. It goes to the positive, and this black one, I believe, goes down to the distributor. It's positive ground, so it's very confusing. Just like that. And, uh, yeah, see the phone even gets confused. Doesn't want to deal with it. It's positive ground, so it goes... Yeah, <laughs> something. One way or another makes a connection. I think the negative gets charged first coming out of the distributor. 
so that to me that seems like it would go to the positive side but from reading everything the red goes to the ignition switch and maybe my ignition switch is going bad that's another possibility either that or the distributor wire the ground wire positive ground wire whatever it is is rubbing it's another possibility lots of possibilities um so if this new coil doesn't work i'll probably try a condenser and then i'll probably bypass my ignition switch and then after all that i will check that uh ground wire in here just make sure it's not shorting out because it uh or make sure it's not grounding out so it's probably positive i guess and uh if this is a uh, confusing welcome to the club so uh i'm learning about it and i guess this is how you learn is trial and error uh nice i used to be part of a model a club but I quit the quit the model stop participating in the model a club because i was riding motorcycles and then i sold the car so i stopped going to the meetings i'm sure i could probably go back and but i don't got time to go hang out with a car club as much as i'd like to learn more about it I'm going to have to find somebody who knows more about these things and wants to hang out over here or, or at their place instead of going to have breakfast and picnics. But um, anyway, it is what it is. It was a good time. But I was into motorcycling and they, they said, they said, you know, you know, this is a car club, right? Because I was rode my motorcycle to the events. I was like, oh, yeah, I know one day and then it turned out being nope so anyway we're gonna put some more lube up in here on these lube them up and then we will have all brand new parts except for my condenser which is a couple I think it's only like one drive old so it's only drove it not very far at all but yeah I don't think my phone wants to uh, play with me anymore I think my phone's tired of working on the car I don't blame it I'm getting a little tired of it too anyway we are almost ready to try starting it again. Well, that must be in. <laughs> you guys are going to get dizzy. So I, I just think that's in that's as far as it wants to go. I, I don't want to pull it back out. It seems pretty tight. All right, now it should fire right up. It should just come, come to life. So we'll move everything from the hood again. Put all these little parts put, put right there for now. Just my little workbench. Okay, okay. So, yeah. 
hopefully now it just fires right up. We will I plug the battery charger back in since I cranked it a few times, try to give it some more oomph. Oh, back on the ground. There we go. All right, Ms. Go Go, it's time to put on a show. I've been working on you for a few hours. Don't let us down. Everybody wants to see you run. We want to put the tools away. Go rest up for work tomorrow. Okay. All right. Okay. So. Off. Get my shoe back untied because I take my shoes off when I drive my car. Keep all the dirt out of there. That way I don't got to vacuum it. All right. So we got a kill switch. Boom. Power on. Headlights should be on. Converted to LEDs. The guy did a lot of work to it. And then uh, he moved into a place without a garage. So he figured that he didn't want it sitting outside. And he had some health issues, but I don't mind if it sits outside. I'd rather have it sit outside than not have it at all. So here we are again, turning the gas back on. We're gonna set this back here. All right, come on, Ms. Go Go. We replaced your plugs, your points, your plug wires, plug straps. Your rotor, your cap, your coil, your coil wire. Let's see what you can do for us. Put it in neutral, tighten your uh, enrichener, and then open it one turn. Turn the key on. Nope, that was the problem. Probably not going to bore you guys with the uh, details. Uh, Horn works. Uh, Horn works. So. Uh, Thanks everyone for watching. It's too bad we couldn't get her going. If anybody's got any ideas, wants to leave a comment, I'm open to listen. And uh, until then, see you out on the road. <laughs>
she is not a happy girl. I don't know what that means. My first tune up on a Model A, so maybe I didn't do everything the way I was supposed to. Um, bubbling out of the one of the cylinder head bolts that must not be good it probably means maybe I blew a head gasket or it's blowing a head gasket or it just didn't like running that rough interesting Well, back to the drawing board. I uh, replaced everything I could. I regapped it again, pointed the rotor at the number one spark plug, and the only thing I could try now is my timing. It ran fine, and then it just stopped on the side of the road one day, and now I haven't been able to get it running since. It ran one day last week, month after I changed the condenser, and then it stalled out, fouled the plugs, uh, maybe it's the carburetor. I, I reversed the coil just in case I got that wrong. Still wouldn't start. I bypassed the ignition switch in case that was going bad and still wouldn't start. Um, yeah, so maybe uh, besides doing the timing, if that doesn't cure it, maybe I'll have to dig into the carburetor. First, it seemed like the float was sticking, but... I don't know. Time will tell. Thanks everybody for watching. Take care. God bless.